be on our YouTube channel um, by tomorrow and you can view it and um, share it with all of your friends and family. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. Because first off, my name is Rebecca Pearl. I'm the Financial Literacy Program Specialist for AARP Elderwatch. Thank you so much for joining us today on this beautiful but cold Wednesday and participating in our webinar about peer-to-peer -peer payment apps. This personally is one of my favorite things to talk about and I could probably talk all day about it, but I'll leave it to a half hour for you all. Um, this webinar is a part of a 20 event series to close out 2020 with information about saving money, talking about finances, and protecting yourself from frauds and scams. This is an interactive webinar, so in the chat box, please feel free to ask your questions. We will answer them throughout the half hour. And before we get started, I just wanted to give a little bit of information about our partnership with the Colorado Attorney General's Office. Um, this has been a partnership that has been sustained for the past 19 years, and AARP Elderwatch works to fight financial exploitation of older adults, of older Coloradans through education, outreach, data collection, and by providing resources about scam prevention and financial security. AARP Elderwatch also has a volunteer staffed helpline where you can report scams or financial exploitation, as well as be connected to a peer-to-peer -peer financial counselor for assistance with various financial issues. Dial 1-800-222-4444, option two, to be connected to a trained volunteer. And that phone number is here, and it will appear a few more times throughout, um, especially at the end. So just for today, um, please make sure that you're muted um, on your phone line until the end. You should have been muted when you came in, but if not, there should be a little uh, microphone icon and you can just press that or just press your space bar and that should mute you. Um, please type your questions in the chat and we'll answer them at the end. And lastly, this presentation is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel. Please find it and share it at our um, link down there. It takes you to the AARP Colorado YouTube channel and all of our stuff is on the playlist. So let's get into the meat of today's presentation. What the heck is a P2P app? So P2P stands for peer-to-peer, -peer, um, and then it's a payment app. Um, and so what these really let you do is it allows users to send one person money from a mobile device or a website through a linked bank account or debit or credit card to another person with a legitimate bank account and uh, linked account. So the transactions that you make through these apps, um, and I'm gonna actually see if I can pull up and show you what a transaction would look like. Um, but I'm not sure if this is gonna quite work. Let me see. Sorry. So I don't, I don't, I don't think this is going to quite work actually, um, but I do have a graph later on. We can discuss a uh, graphic later on that we can discuss. Um, so the transactions that you make um, through these apps are instantaneous and irreversible. So that means they go right away and there's no way of getting that money back in most cases. And we'll talk about the few cases where people can get their money back, but again, very rare. Um, and these apps have gotten really popular over the past few years for people who found it very easy to use them to split bills, pay rent, and purchase goods quickly. Um, so personally, I have three roommates. We uh, split all there's bills in one of my roommates' names, um, and then he splits the bill between all of us, and then Venmo requests all of us um, the twelve dollars for or whatever for the bill, um, and then we all send him the money directly, and that's that. Um, our bills are paid for. Um, peer to peer money transfer apps do not have protections like your credit or debit card does. Um, this money is not insured by the F uh, FDIC like banks are. Um, and whereas you can do a dispute for a credit card or debit card transaction, even though debit card transactions are a little harder to do those disputes, you cannot really do that um, through these apps. Um, that money, once it's gone, it's really just gone. So, AARP 
AARP nationally did a survey in 2020 of holiday shoppers. And 59% of survey respondents said that they have used a peer-to-peer -peer money transfer app. 59%, and that's um, the entire population. Um, and then 39% said that they have not, and 2% said that they were unsure. In Colorado, um, this number actually goes up a little bit. 69% of the population is using peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps, and 43% of the 50-plus population is also using those apps. Um, so it's really interesting to watch as these trends continue to grow, as we see more people turning to these apps to make payments and uh, send money back and forth to one another. So now we're going to go through um, four of the main apps that are used. So the first one is PayPal, and you've probably heard of PayPal before. Um, it is definitely the most um, recognized, I think. Um, it's used widely and around the world, so you can use it in any country that you're in. You can also send money from the United States or any country to another country. Um, you can pay for either gifts and services. Um, which actually have extra protection. So this means you're sending money to a legitimate retailer um, and they pay a little more money to have um, have themselves be a legitimate, a legitimate retailer. So they pay a little bit of uh, fee um, to be listed as one through PayPal. Um, and if you purchase something and it ends up being a scam, but you've used the gifts and services option, PayPal will refund you the money. However, if you use friends and family to send money to someone, even if they're not your friend or family, even if it's a scam, because you use the friends or family, PayPal will not refund the money. So that is really important to keep in mind. If you don't know who you're sending the money to via PayPal, always click gifts and services. You will have more of a chance of getting your money back. PayPal is not just on an app, it has a legitimate website that you can visit and send tracks at transactions from. Um, the payment is instant um, and PayPal balance, so there's a bit of a fee uh, tower with PayPal. So using money from PayPal balance, so money that's come in uh, to your PayPal account that you haven't transferred to a bank account yet or bank account transactions, so directly from your bank account, that's free. But there's a 2.9% fee for credit cards, and it also applies to debit cards and PayPal credit. So if you're using a credit card to send PayPal transactions, a debit card, or PayPal credit, you're going to get um, hit with that 2.9% fee. PayPal does have a customer service phone line, so you can do disputes over the phone with them, um, whereas some of the others do not. Now on to Venmo. So Venmo has a large user base, but slightly smaller than PayPal. Um, it's pretty popular among younger folks um, and also um, parents who younger folks have gotten to use those apps. Um, it only works for transactions within the United States. It does not work outside of the country. Um, and it is also a social network. So when you make a payment to a friend, it shows up in a feed with everyone else's transactions. And you have to have some sort of note with it. Um, so the person that you're sending the money to knows what it's for, but also everyone sees that. You can make those private if you worry about the social aspect of it. I don't really love that. I do use Venmo. I don't love that it's a social media site as well. Um, so I do make most of my transactions private so no one else can see those except for the person getting them. Um, and then using a debit card, prepaid card, so a prepaid debit card or Venmo balance or bank account is free. Um, but using a credit card can give you a fee of up to 3%. Um, and then Venmo does transfer money for free from the app to your bank account, um, but it can take two to three days. Um, so they started charging an instant transfer fee, which can be a small percentage of either the money that you're transferring or um, 25 to 50 cents. Now on to Cash App. So Cash App is fairly new and was actually designed to be used specifically for business transactions, but then went into, you know, got into our greater society and is used between everyday people. 
Um, so Cash App has an interesting feature where you can decide how fast you want the money to be transferred either to another person or to your bank account. So you can transfer money either instantly or wait a couple of days. Um, there are no fees for the transfers, so that is um, nice no matter um, what you're using except for a credit card. A credit card does have a 3% fee, um, and you'll see this through a lot of these apps. Um, it's just pretty standard overall. Um, Cash App allows the buying and selling of Bitcoin, and this is fairly new, um, and this is, I think, the only peer-to-peer -peer money transfer app that allows for the buying and selling of Bitcoin, um, and that can actually add extra risk in getting involved with a scam. Um, if someone is telling you to buy Bitcoin and send it to them, that is a red flag of a scam, especially if you're not exactly sure what Bitcoin is, and it's totally okay if you're not exactly sure what Bitcoin is. It's cryptocurrency that can't be traced. Um, it literally exists only over the internet with a code that goes among it, that goes with it. Um, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of it. That's like a whole nother presentation. Um, but just so you know, this can be a red flag of a scam as well. There is no way to cancel a transaction on Cash App. So really, once that money is gone, it's gone and there's no way to get it back. Um, instant deposits cost 1% of whatever you're trying to deposit into your bank account. And then this is probably the most important thing that you need to know about Cash App. There is no customer service phone number. If you Google Cash App customer service, you will get a scammer who will pretend to be Cash App and ask you to send gift cards. It's a scam. Do not call Cash App. You have to do every single dispute that you have through the app. And if that is gonna be an issue, Cash App is not the way to go. Lastly, we have Zelle. And Zelle is used by many major financial institutions. It's oftentimes just already through your bank account. Um, you can probably go to, if you're with any major bank, you can go to your banking app or website and see, you know, the Zelle logo come up. Um, and it makes it so that you can send money from one Zelle user to another Zelle user. So a lot of banks use it and there, and it does have a standalone app, but not a lot of people have the standalone app. Um, it's mainly designed for banks to get into the peer-to-peer -peer money transfer service. Um, so there are instant free cash transfers from one Zelle bank to another, um, but that changes a little bit in the app. And then there's no credit card support on Zelle. So you actually can't use a credit card at all. It's just from bank account to bank account. And there's no way to cancel a transaction even if the payee doesn't have Zelle. So let's say you tried to send $1,000 to someone, but they don't have Zelle, that money is just gone. Um, so know that the person has Zelle before you send the money and know that the person is legitimate before you send the money because it's gonna be very difficult to get it back. Now that we've gone over the different types of peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps, especially the four big ones, um, here's how to use them. So what happens is you go into whatever app you would like and you set up a link from your bank account um, into the app. So either you log in or you put in your account number and routing number and then it connects automatically to the bank. Then you're good to go. It's actually pretty simple. Um, you don't ask for much more personal information than just your bank account and a phone number that connects it so people can find you either via that phone number or via email or username. Um, and then you're on the app and you can send money um, through the app to another person. So let's say I need to send money to my friend Jake and I we went out to dinner last night, we split the bill. Um, just kidding, we got takeout, we split the bill. Uh, and I need to pay him back. So he requests me, he requests money from me, say like $20. I'm like, okay, I, the request comes up on my phone, it's a little notification, and I press fulfill request, just like send money, pay or whatever. Pay, I press pay, and automatically the $20 sends. And that either, on the apps, it will come up. You'll have two different options. You can either send it from 
that balance in the app. So there might be money that you haven't transferred yet to your bank account um, that you're able to use or it'll come directly from your bank account. And the one thing I wanna say about having money in the app is that transfer your money as soon as possible. If something happens to that app, that money is gone. And they're really, it's gonna be very difficult to get it back. Um, the money's not insured. So as fast as you can transfer that money, um, even if it take, even if it says it's gonna take one to two business days, um, just transfer it because you don't want that money sitting in there, especially if it's a large sum. I see people with large sums of money sitting in their Venmo balance and it drives me crazy because I worry so much that that money's just gonna disappear. Um, so transfer your money as soon as you can. Uh, it's definitely safer that way. Stay scam safe, people. Scams are honestly rampant on these apps. Scammers use them because they're untraceable and it's pretty easy to be like, oh, download this app, send me money. Um, but you should not be using a peer-to-peer -peer money transfer service to purchase products. So if a seller is saying Venmo me for something, um, you should not Venmo them. Um, these apps are really for sending money to people that you know, that you've met, that you're friends with, that you're family with, um, with the exception of PayPal that has those extra protections for sending for gifts and services. Um, so be really careful before you send money to people that just don't send money to people that you don't know. It's stranger danger, really, it's fundamentally. Um, double and triple check that email, username, and phone number of the person you're sending the money to, because if you send it to the wrong person, it's gone, unless that person decides that they're nice and they're gonna send the money back to you. Um, I made the mistake of accidentally sending the wrong person $150 once. It was gone forever. Um, so just be really careful about getting the correct username, phone, and email of that person. Two-factor authentication is when you have to put in either a username or password, and then they ask for either a PIN number or a code that gets sent to your phone. Um, and you have to put that in as well to make sure you know you are who you say you are. Um, enable two-factor authentication both on your bank account and on your peer-to-peer -peer money transfer app. This makes it so it's a lot more difficult for people to hack into your accounts. And if you run into an issue, check first how to contact customer service through the app or on the website. Do not Google customer service number cash app because you will get a number for a scammer, as I said earlier. Um, and let your friends know about all of this, let your family know about all of this because this is really a tool that scammers are increasingly using, um, especially for newer scams that have come up with coronavirus. The puppy scam has been going crazy. Uh, since everyone's been staying at home and increasingly people are using peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps to con people through that scam. Uh, another one that we've seen pretty recently is people paying rent, people paying deposits for um, apartments that they're trying to rent um, and sending those deposits through Cash App and then the person completely disappearing. Um, that person that sent the money being out a lot of money and also not having a legitimate place to live. Um, so stay scam safe with these apps. Be very careful of who you're sending money to. Um, and if you have any questions, these are some great resources to visit. There's the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, which is just chock full of consumer protection resources. Also has great tips on budgeting. Um, and savings. The Federal Trade Commission has everything on scams you would ever want. Um, lots of good information there. AARP Money is a great place to go. They have a few articles specifically about peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps, um, one of which I actually linked on the bottom, how cash meant for friends can call it into crooked hands is from the AARP Money website. Um, and this is a great article on how scammers use the funds uh, from peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps. And then lastly, AARP Elder Watch. Visit us anytime on the web or give us a call, 1-800-222-4444, option two. And we are happy to answer any of your questions about peer-to-peer -peer money transfers. Um, 
budgeting, savings, fraud, scams, we, whatever it is, we got you covered. I am going to stop sharing this now so I can go see what questions we have and start answering those. Wonderful. And we are back. Okay. If someone sends me money, is it certain that the money is real and sent to me? Yes. So you actually can't make a transaction if you have no money in your account through most of these apps, um, unless the person is using a credit card. But in that case, the credit card that they would that they are using would have to be legitimate. Um, so there's really no way to send money that's not legitimate. Like when you get a cash in the mail, or sorry, when you get a check in the mail and then that check bounces. That doesn't really happen in peer-to-peer uh, -peer money transfer situations um, just because the app is verifying that that person is real and the money that they're sending is real as well. Um, please continue to send questions if you have any. Um, I hope that kind of cleared that up a bit. Um, it's yeah, it's it's just really difficult to send money that isn't real because they're just constantly checking to make sure, you know, that stuff is all OK. Um, just one more call for questions, and if I don't see any others, I will let us all go and have a great rest of our day. Um, again, if any questions come up after the presentation, feel free to give us a call. Um, I'm happy to talk to you about peer-to-peer -peer money transfer apps whenever you would like. So, um, yeah, thank you so much and have a good day, everyone.